We're here on September 26th uh, for the 2011 Mesothelium Awareness Day. You can see uh, people here trying to raise awareness for mesothelioma. This is actually a nationally recognized awareness day uh, by the United States Congress. It was something that the Mesothelium Applied Research Foundation uh, got Congress to recognize. And it's important uh, to have a day uh, where we raise awareness for mesothelioma. Uh, just like other diseases like breast cancer, mesothelioma now has a day, September 26th every year, to raise awareness for mesothelioma. And coming down to to the Today Show and gathering and getting on the air for a little bit has become a tradition uh, in a way to raise awareness for mesothelioma. We're here with Kathy Wiedemer, Executive Director of the Mesothelium Applied Research Foundation. And Kathy, could you just tell everyone uh, about the foundation and what we're doing here today? Absolutely, Jerry. Thanks. And, and thanks to LBK for all that you've done to help us make it happen this morning. Um, the, the MISO Foundation is, we're here today to celebrate uh, Mesothelioma Awareness Day. Uh, a little, uh, this is a, a movement that started several years ago by Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation volunteers to cause to bring raise awareness of the disease. But we're also here today to bring people's attention to CureMeso.org, which is our website, and you can go to CureMeso.org to get really good trusted information, get information on how to contact a medical liaison who will be there for folks who need help and need information about mesothelioma right away. So that's why we're here today. We've got 50. 50 plus people here in the audience uh, with their orange t-shirts on um, raising awareness. Rich, uh, we're raising awareness for mesothelioma today and uh, if you could just tell everyone uh, who you are and uh, just a little bit about yourself and, uh, and about what we're doing here today. Great. Uh, my name is Rich Mosca. I am a five-year peritoneal mesothelioma survivor and I have to tell you I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't partially at least for the Meso Foundation. My family, all the people that are here today, are all here to make sure that everybody knows what this deadly disease does and what the cause of it is. And uh, if anybody needs any help, please reach out to the Meso Foundation and we'll be more than happy to help. Heather, um, all right, we're raising awareness for music dilemma today, uh, of course. And uh, I know you're like one of the strongest uh, most vocal mesothelioma warriors out there. Could you just introduce yourself and, and just talk about uh, just about your journey a little bit and kind of why we're here today? My name is Heather Von St. James. I am a five and a half year survivor of pleural mesothelioma. I was diagnosed in November of 2005, just three and a half months after my baby girl was born. Um, I've had extra pleural pneumonectomy, which is surgery, chemo, radiation. As far as treatments, I've run the gamut, but I'm here and I'm alive almost six years later for the cause. And I'm here to raise awareness, let people know that there is hope, that a MISO diagnosis is not a death sentence, that there are survivors here who are fighting to find a cure. I'm, I'm here I'm here with a, with a legend, <laughs> Larry Davis. Uh, Larry, can you tell everyone about who you are and uh, your journey? and uh, the active role you've taken in raising awareness for mesothelioma. Well, I'm Larry Davis, and uh, love to run. The, I was diagnosed five years ago with mesothelioma, and in spite of all the success stories you hear of people making it a few years, 90% are dead within five years, and there's no cure, and we need research money because the American Cancer Society and all the other organizations have never given any money for MISO research because it's an orphan disease. So it's a pretty tragic thing, seeing the only known source is asbestos. And the World Trade Center only had 400 tons of it in it when it fell on those guys. And uh, people are still denying that it's a problem in this country when it should have been banned uh, 30 years ago. It, this is a crime in the USA to have asbestos still legal. Larry, uh, tell everyone uh, about your fundraising efforts uh, for Mesa Thelema Research. I put on a Miles for Miso 8K in Boca Raton, Florida. It'll be February 12th this year. In the last two years, we've raised $50,000 for research. And I put my dough into non-chemo therapies, meaning immunology, stem cell research, and... Uh, 
get my opinion is that miso and uh, chemo don't seem to go together very well. And we've been very successful. We should have a huge race this uh, spring. We also put on a health symposium and invite the key research doctors to come down and help about their latest research and help them raise some money for that. And that's why I'm here today. Thanks, Larry. We're here to raise awareness for mesothelioma, and I've talked to many people uh, who, who say that you're an inspiration for them uh, because of your story. So can you tell us a little bit about your story and about how you feel about being here today, uh, Mesothelioma Awareness Day at the Today Show? Well, my story started uh, nine and a half years ago when I found out I had miso, and I went through a clinical trial with operations and bulkings and chemotherapy and radiation. I was in a wheelchair for months, um, but eventually I ended up getting stronger. So it's taken me nine years to get strong. But to see all these people here knowing that mesothelioma has affected them is kind of overwhelming. Um, you have pa patients, you have families, you have um, people who just are in support of the people they know. Because this disease needs to come to the forefront, needs to be addressed, we need research money for it, and as, as far as I know, the people that have worked with me with LPK and with the Mizzou Foundation have worked so hard to bring this to where it is now, and today is Mesothelioma Awareness Day. We've done that. Carol Batch. Carol Batch. Yeah. I'm Kevin. Kevin Batch. Yes. I'm Jerry Buck. We're just uh, wanting to raise awareness. Uh, we're taking some video. We've heard from a number of families uh, who have been affected by mesothelioma. We've heard some, uh, from some people who are living with mesothelioma. Can you just say, would you mind saying a few words about about who you are and how you feel, just who you are and how you feel about being here today? <laughs> Kevin, you start. Do you want to? Okay. With Matt Lauer and Ed Curry. You know, for my dad, uh, he passed away in January uh, from mesothelioma. Um, he had it for about 15 months, or from diagnosis. Um, you know, tell us, it, tell us a little bit about your dad. He was in the Navy. Uh, he worked at EB building. You know the submarines, and he was also a firefighter for 40 years. Um, you know, it's just. And they've looked at I don't know. <laughs> your, your father uh, served in the United States Navy. He yes. helped. He helped build submarines yes. that were used to protect the country. Do you feel like the United States it should be taking some federal money and funding research? Yes. Definitely. I think they should be doing a lot more than what they are doing. Uh, and doing this awareness, I think, is great because it should show them that that this should be happening. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So we're here to raise awareness for mesothelioma. Do you mind just uh, say, tell them a little bit about your family and, and why you're here? How you feel about being here today? Well, we're here for the cure. That's why we're here. My father was diagnosed um, 24 months ago, and he's plural mesothelioma. Um, he is a man that has uh, built this country, built this city. He's a, he was in Peter Cooper Stuyvesant Town, head of operations there, and we designed all of the plumbing system in uh, Peter Cooper Stuyvesant Town, and um, because of that, it has now uh, a fatal disease. That we don't have a cure for, and um, only one line of treatment. Alimta is the only FDA approved um, uh, chemotherapy out there right now. There's a lot of phase three trials that are out there with real promising drugs, and that's what we're striving for today to get some more money to um, be able to get those out there for my guests. We're raising awareness for mesothelioma today, and uh, you've come all the way from West Virginia yes. uh, for this day. Yes. Uh, be on the Today Show. Uh, can you uh, just talk a little bit about yourself, uh, what your, your, your story is uh, relating to mesothelioma, and why you're here today? Yeah. Sure. We lost uh, we lost my dad to mesothelioma three years ago, and I'm here with my aunt, who which is his brother, my mom, and my sister. We're from West Virginia, and we also do a fundraiser in uh, West Virginia. 
have on um, the 24th of this sat- this sat- past Saturday, and then we came here for this. So um, we're hoping to raise awareness and more funds in the future. What would you say to, to uh, families who, who maybe have a family member who, who has been recently diagnosed with mesothelioma? What would you say to a family that's facing it right now? Gosh, I actually am lost for words because it's, it's so devastating that, you know, that there is other people out there. There is there is hope that, you know, together as a family of Cure Me So, that we can come together and keep believing in a cure and just help each other through it. Uh, I know that you're uh, a real supporter of music and research, and I know that you have a personal story uh, to tell. Can you just just uh, say who you are and yeah, your, sure. your story as it relates to mesothelioma and why you're here today? My name is Erica Yagano, and I'm from New York, Brooklyn, and Long Island, and I now live in Manhattan. And in 2000, my dad, Anthony Yagano, was diagnosed with oral mesothelioma. Unfortunately, back then, there was really no way to really... Well, there was, it was tough to diagnose because doctors weren't really familiar with the disease. So my dad was sick for about three or four years before he was finally diagnosed in March of 2000. And unfortunately, at that point, the disease, the disease had already spread um, outside of the flora. So he died just seven weeks later on April 29th. And a couple of months later, I came in contact with the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. And since then, I really kind of dedicated my resources and my time to working with uh, the foundation to help... Um, raise money to fund research so that one day we will not have to deal with this disease and at the very least we'll be able to treat it more effectively like some other cancers like breast cancer um, and so that's what I'm here for and it's my first year in the plaza for Mesothelium Awareness Day and I'm looking forward to many more and looking forward to a day where we have a real shot at a cure. Can you just uh, say a few words about your annual fundraiser? Oh yes. So for the past six years uh, myself and one uh, other supporter Janice Knox is not here, we've been organizing the 5K Walk for Hope, which takes place in Eisenhower Park in Long Island every year. And uh, each year we gather about 150 to 200 people who walk the 5K, raising money. Um, this past year we raised close to $20,000. So over six years we've raised um, close to $100,000, which goes directly to the foundation to, again, fund research. Awesome. Yeah, and we're working on this year's race, so we may do it our, actually race this year, race and out front. So we're looking into nice. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep getting bigger. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so and much. Thank you, Good job. you too for supporters like you. Not many law firms, I think, support the cause like they should. So thank you. My dad actually worked with your law firm, Mark and Walter. He worked in, on the ships and in the Brooklyn Navy Yard when he was a young man. And then when he was in his later, you know, about 77, I think, he started getting subtle symptoms. And it wasn't picked up. And then when he was diagnosed, the local oncologist said he would go to a conference and try to learn how to treat him. So he gave him traditional chemo. And we did not have the support of the Mars or Cure Meso organization or leading experts at that time. And this was before, uh, this was before the Visa Dilemma Applied Research Foundation. Yes, yes. And Robert Commodore was very supportive and helpful to us. Uh, but we didn't have the networking, we didn't have the educational backing. I did not like self research in the library and so forth. But my dad was, he believed in yes or no. He was an engineer. He believed that if there was a treatment and you could prove that it would help him, he would go for it. Otherwise, he didn't like go all over the world at that point. Because there wasn't anything that was that promising. Your, your sign says your father was a uh, brilliant engineer, a good citizen, and neighbor. Right. Can you tell us about uh, the picture here? Which oh, well, father? he worked for the Air Force and Navy for um, Fairchild Republic and Grumman. And he, we had about 50 or 60 of these um, when we cleared his stuff out. He was always getting awards and letters. Um, he was very precise. And I actually made a CD to raise money uh, in honor of uh, him and for the Mesa Foundation. Thank you so much. And I hope to continue to be actively involved. Because it's a family disease and a community disease. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks so much.